Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ann Tilly and I'm back at you again with another underwear making video. My first video tips for sewing underwear was so successful that it's proven to me that there's an interest for people learning how to make their own underwear at home. And today I wanna help you really get started making your own practical everyday underwear. I'm not talking lingerie, corsetry, anything like that. I'm talking practical everyday underwear that can become a staple in your wardrobe. So let's dive in. It all starts with finding a good pattern. After the success of my last underwear video, I decided to take my three core designs and have them produced so that you can be able to buy them as a digital download and be able to sew my favorite styles of underwear at home. My three styles are the hip hugger, the basic bikini, and a boxer brief that I pretty much make for my husband and it's a staple in his wardrobe. And those are all available on my website, antillyhandmade.com. They are by no means the only underwear patterns out there and they certainly don't cater to every body type and style. So definitely take a look at maybe some of your favorite existing underwear that you have already and observe kind of what kind of cut you prefer. So I don't have a high leg, like French cut style underwear that I think people that have larger thighs and generally larger sized folks tend to like a higher cut leg um, or even just it has a little bit of a sexier look than a hip hugger. And I know that I believe Emerald Erin, who's a Canadian based designer, she has a pattern on her website, uh, emeraldarin.com. She also has a lot of great materials for sale, and I really highly recommend following her on social media. She's got a lot of great inspiration there, and she's got great bra and underwear patterns. There's also Sophie Hines. I actually don't know where. I think she's in New England somewhere in the United States. And she has some more jazzy underwear with a little bit more style. She has different finishing techniques in the way that I do. She also has a period underwear, if that's something that you're interested in making. I've made those before and really enjoy those. And um, as well as some classic styles. So make sure to check out her website and see if there's a cut that you like there. The very first pattern that I ever used to get started was on clothhabit.com. And I believe her name is Amy. And she only has one underwear pattern. It's called a, the Rosy Lady Short. And it's a free pattern, which is probably why I started with that. And so I printed that out and I followed it the way that she told me to make it. And then I slowly started to manipulate it based on what I wanted. And so actually my pattern came from beginning beginning with her pattern, which are completely different patterns at this point, but you sometimes got to start somewhere and then figure out what you like, what you don't like. Let's say that you can't quite find a style that's exactly the way you want. Try to get as close as you can. So like, let's say that you start with my hip hugger pattern. I would recommend cutting out the size that I tell you to cut out, sew the crotch, sew the side seams, don't worry about doing all the finishing, just do those quick edges, and then try them on over top of maybe your current favorite, you know, ready to wear pair of underwear that you have, and compare this the shape of the two. And maybe even take a marking tool and mark on your first, you know, prototype sample underwear of like maybe how the leg shape differs between my pattern and your favorite pair of of underwear. Then when you take that underwear off, you literally have some data for like how you would want to change my pattern to make it fit you better. So that's just like one kind of visual way of changing a pattern. It's not a beginner's thing to do pattern making. It is a skill that you build, but I think you should practice being a little bit more fearless about manipulating a pattern um, if you can't find something that fits you the way you want. Ultimately, I just don't want you to be held prisoner to existing patterns to really get like the exact style that you want. And you know, it took me years to really perfect the fit that I wanted and because it's not like we have all day every day to make underwear. So I would make a pair, wear them around for a while, think about what I would do differently. Every time I would do laundry, I would look at my store-bought underwear and see how it was sewn and what kind of techniques I could try. That's how I explored different finishing techniques for how I was sewing it. So allow it to be an ongoing process and eventually the goal being that you end up with a great pattern that you can come to again and again. 
Next, let's talk fabric. Now, knit fabrics are much harder to find for the home sewing market because my theory is that, you know, actually sewing and wearing knits is a relatively new thing compared to our parents' and grandparents' generation. And basically, the market hasn't caught up to that. I, I don't know how big of a community we are that are wanting to sew knits. You know, a lot of people quilt. That's why you find a lot of quilting cotton in a lot of stores. But that knit fabric is a much smaller market. A lot of those really beautiful knit fabrics that you find in like produced ready to wear market is like fabric that's being milled specifically for factories and is not something that's trickling down to the home sewing market. So you're probably gonna need to go online to source these materials. My absolute favorite fabric is a stretch cotton knit. So it's 95% cotton, 5% spandex, and it's a knit jersey fabric. I really love that little bit of stretch in the fabric because it just gives you a nice snug fit and works really well for my hip hugger design that requires absolutely no elastic around the waist or the legs. And so it's a quick design. It's really soft on the body. However, you can do this with an 100% cotton. The difference between 100% cotton and a cotton with a stretch is that 100% cotton will kind of relax away from your body and not be very clingy. So in in that case, you would just need to use that fabric with something that has an elasticated edge on all of the edges, and I think you could get away with it. A workaround for finding a really good fabric is, okay, maybe you can't find exactly what you're looking for in Joann's, but what about you know, a discount store like Ross, maybe there are some like extra large t-shirts on clearance that are a really nice uh, fabric that would be good for sewing underwear. So maybe thinking outside of the box for what kind of fabric you're looking for. Another thing that makes it trickier shopping for underwear fabric is something can have the same fiber content. It can have the, all the same terms like jersey, you know, 95, 5%, you know, fiber content. But the stretch factor is another thing to contemplate in terms of how a fabric's going to fit. And that's something that I've run into when I was trying to shop for different types of fabrics other than this one fabric that I love. So for example, I bought some Robert Kaufman Laguna knit. And what I noticed for lack of like technical terms is it just, it stretches and stops versus like my favorite underwear fabric, it stretches and kind of continues to stretch a little bit more. And so basically my favorite fabric has a higher stretch percentage than the Robert Kaufman fabric. And so when I would sew my favorite pair of underwear in that fabric, they would fit tighter and be less comfortable. And so that doesn't mean that you can't use that fabric. It just means that you're gonna need to adjust your pattern to accommodate it. What I would do in a scenario scenario where if I wanted to make my favorite pair of underwear out of the Robert Kaufman fabric that doesn't stretch as much, one, I could go up a size, but probably what I would do is just add a quarter inch to each out seam. So if I did a quarter inch on each of the front out seams and a quarter inch on each of the back out seams, that gives me a one inch overall total circumference. Then I could put them on and if they're a little too loose, I could take it back in or if it fits right, then I just know that that's what I need to do when I'm working with that particular fabric. I would then probably take my pattern and I would write directly on the pattern for Robert Kaufman Laguna stretch knit, I add a quarter inch to each out seam. And that way you don't necessarily have to have a different pattern for each fabric, but you can just kind of have notes on how you kind of manipulate things based on the needs of the fabric. Now the question you're probably asking yourself is, Anne, where do you get your favorite underwear fabric? Now, here's the rub. So I have a background in working in production for clothing factories. And in those factories was where I first discovered this fabric and was making my underwear from scraps from that production. Now, this fabric comes from a mill that is only interested in working with production factories. So they don't wanna sell one bolt of fabric to a small independent fabric store. They wanna sell 100 bolts of fabric 
to a production studio. And so that really uh, limits those of us who just want to get that single bolt or even less than a single bolt um, to do at home. But with the resources that I've acquired over the years and several months of persuasion, I was finally able to get a single bolt of this fabric to have in my studio with the goal of being able to put it on my website and sell it by the half yard for you to be able to access. This was a goal of mine from the beginning of the year as a way of trying to make it that much easier for people to make their own underwear at home is to be able to not only provide a pattern, but also provide a high quality fabric. This fabric is so soft and yummy. It's organic. It's all made in the United States. This fabric has about an 80% stretch factor on the straight grain, as well as 80% on the cross grain, which is really cool because it basically means that we can use this fabric on the straight grain or the cross grain and get the same fit. So for example, if you took a five inch section of this fabric and stretched it into where it stretches till it stops, whatever that number is, is gonna give you your percentage. So if you stretched a five inch piece of this fabric and it stretched all the way to 10 inches, then it has 100% stretch factor. This is the first time I've ever attempted to sell fabric on my website and I just have the one bolt. So we're gonna see how it goes. Hopefully you get a chance to try this out for yourself. I really see my passion as being an enabler and trying to enable you to make it as easy as possible for you to make your own clothing at home. What I've been doing for years and what I have such a passion in doing. This only comes in a natural undyed um, color, but I love playing with tie dyeing with this. And so I'll show you a little bit about how I like to do that at the end of the video. So we've got our pattern, we've got our fabric, Let's get into how we're going to sew these. Typically, if you are going to buy a pattern online, you're going to see something like this. This is my hip hugger pattern, and it's going to have all the different sizes nested. I do mine color coded, so you would basically pick out which size you want based on your hip and cut that out. What I've done is I've kept this hole and then I've traced off a single pattern on hard manila paper to uh, my particular size. And then I still have all of this in case I wanna do a different size in the future. I prefer a, a nice firm paper and I also like to make sure that I cut my pattern open. So if I, what I'll do is I'll actually mark the line and when I cut out my pattern, I'll cut it on the half so that I make sure that all of these things are exactly the same. But I like to start with having my pattern piece open, especially because if I'm working with scraps, which historically <laughs> I've been working with scraps, it helps me just like plan out where my pattern pieces are going to go more easily. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out a hip hugger pattern, a basic bikini and a boxer brief. And let's see how long it takes me to do that. To find the grain on this type of fabric, what I like to do is on one side of the fabric, you can kind of see these vertical columns. That's usually what people use as the right side of the fabric. So I'm gonna make sure that that is facing the table. And then I'm going to fold and see if I can visually line up. Basically what it is, it's like, it's like the columns of the knits. I'm gonna line that up as best I can. I can now put all of my pattern pieces on the fold on that green. That just took me a little over three minutes to cut out one pair of hip huggers. Now let's cut out the other two pairs. So it took me a little over three minutes to cut each of the bikini and the hip hugger, and then about six minutes 
to cut the boxer briefs. So we're talking not that much time of much of a time commitment to get things cut. Let's see how long it takes me to sew these pairs together. I'm going to sew all of the principal seams for my garments on a serger, but you don't have to have a serger to sew these. You can just use a narrow zigzag stitch. You want it to be a shorter zigzag stitch um, so that it doesn't pop when the fabric stretches. So what I would recommend is taking some scraps and running some stitches and practice stretching them and seeing um, if they hold up. And if you get to where it can stretch within a reasonable amount, and not pop, then you should be good. I haven't made a ton of pairs of underwear with um, zigzag instead of the serger, so I'm not necessarily the expert in that field, but I have made pairs with it and it has worked. Sometimes the stitches pop on me a little bit, but they're still like totally wearable with a couple little pop stitches, or sometimes when they come out of the washing machine, I'll just um, like bring them over to the machine and just repair those little areas. So not a big deal. I'm now finished with everything I need to sew on the serger and I'm ready to go on to hem finishing. So for my hip hugger pattern, I don't have any elastic. I just need to fold up the edges and sew those down. I went ahead and folded up the leg edges before I sewed the side seams because it just makes it a lot easier. So the top just needs to be folded now and ready to be sewn. The basic bikini needs elastic on three sides. I was gonna do an elastic lace, but I didn't have enough of any one color, so I'm gonna do a fold over elastic. You can get these materials in a lot of different places. I find the best options for elastic lace to be from a store called SoSeoSassy.com out of Alabama. Um, and fold over elastic you can get there. You can also get this on Emerald Aaron and Sophie Hines websites. You can get it on brawbuilders.com, um, a lot of different sites. And you can get it in different widths. The wider you get it, the little bit easier it is to sew it. So I've got those three pieces cut out and I just close them with a zigzag stitch. And then for my boxer brief, I just, the bottom edge is just gonna be folded up and sewn. And then the top edge is gonna be a band elastic. So in the past, I have found elastics that were literally marketed as men's underwear elastic. Lately, I've been using just this like plush strap elastic that I actually use for my bralettes. And it makes for a really beautiful, soft finish and my husband really likes the black instead of the white. So that's what I've been doing lately. Again, I went ahead and cut this to length and over the years working with him with this underwear and with th this underwear, after measuring on my body every so often, 
I just write it down on my pattern exactly what length and so then I don't have to go re-measure it every time. And especially with like Adam who is not necessarily in the studio with me, it's nice to have that number written down so I just know what length to cut this at. So now I just need to attach all of these and I'm going to use a cover stitch machine. That's just like my preferred like specialty machine that I like to use for this. But you can certainly use a zigzag stitch. I prefer a dotted zigzag stitch just because I, I like the way it looks. And also just the dotted part makes the stitches in general shorter. And so you have less of a chance of them popping. With that, I am officially done with making underwear with my brand new Bolt or Veganic stretch knit fabric, now available on my website. So I've got my boxer brief with my strap elastic band. I've got my basic bikini with fold over elastic edging. And then my personal favorite, the hip huggers that just have this simple fold over finish. So I, let's see, how long did that take me? Okay, so all of that edge finishing took me about 31 minutes. Let's see, 31 minutes and like eight minutes to do the elastic, 15, and then it was like 20 to surge. And then let's just say it was 10 minutes to cut out. So all in all, it took me about an hour and a half to make three pairs of underwear. Granted, um, this one was much faster to make than the other two pairs. Um, I think this pair might take the longest, which is like kind of funny that the guy's thing takes longer. And you know, I, as much as I brag about how easy it is to make a pair of underwear, doing this elastic edging, I do get like a little tired after a while. And I think that is also another reason why I like the hip hugger so much. But one of the things I found is that when I do start to get tired sewing, that's probably a good time for me to take a break anyways and come back to it later. Um, but still, an hour and a half to sew everything. Granted, I'm a professional with a studio all set up and everything to go. So even if it took you three hours to make um, three pairs of underwear, I think that that's pretty amazing. And you don't have to go to the mall anymore. And you get something that's like a beautiful quality material. Anyways, I hope that you give it a try. I hope that I've helped answer some more questions. I certainly haven't covered everything. So if you have any great tips, any great um, websites or resources or favorite underwear patterns that you've used, definitely comment below on this video so that we can all just have like some nice uh, place to find uh, information for making our own underwear. If you have any more questions, let me know. If you want to see any more videos from me, I'm doing my best to do the video work. Uh, it's been like 100 degrees in my studio and it just started to cool down. 
So I'm in a better place to make videos and I've got a new pattern coming out soon too in the next month. So stay tuned. Until then, my name is Ann Tilly and as always, happy sewing. Mwah.